Okay guys, winter is upon us. Welcome to the Asprey. And today we're going to be showing you how to get the best out of your winter practice. You're watching meandmygolf.com. Okay guys, so today we're answering a YouTube comment from Richard Gall. Now Richard is a, uh, he's 15 years of age. Uh, he's a very keen golfer but his, coming into the winter, it's gonna be very difficult for him to practice. And we've had a few other questions about this. What, we sh what should we be doing through the winter? So his driving range, his local one is a, a, a whole hour away. He can't obviously get on the golf course after school. So he's very limited in his practice. He's turning up on a Saturday, not almost having enough time to improve. He wants to play golf, obviously. Practice, it's really difficult to cram it all. It's difficult in. to keep the progression there, isn't it? Yeah, and, and we see this all the time. So we see these sort of massive spikes of improvement in the summer. And then it almost through the winter, they stagnate. They don't get better until actually sort of June it's almost too late they're almost playing their best golf by the end of the season yeah so uh, which sometimes can help but obviously we want to get you a good solid winter program now one of the things obviously you're limited on your on, on access to facilities so you've got your living room now you mentioned in your, in, your, in your comment as well that your garden isn't very big so you can't really do many swings in the garden either so but we can still get you training good quality movements in the living room so um, I'm going to very quickly go to a book that was written by Daniel Coyle um, a book called Talent Code. So that's the first thing we're going to recommend that you do. Go and buy that book, Daniel Coyle, Talent Code. Yep, very good book. Fantastic reading. And what Daniel did, he actually toured the world and he wanted to find out what was making these small academies all around the world making them so good. So he wanted to find out the common denominators on why these academies were they were sort of releasing these players or these performers who were fantastic top level at the sport. So all over the world, um, one of the ones that really stood out for me was a small tennis uh, academy in Russia, which produced more top 20 female tennis players than all of America. That's pretty impressive, mm. Maria Sharapova being one of those. And one of the common denominators that they found, that he found, sorry, was something called deep practice. So deep practice is basically, if you can imagine Sharapova hitting four hands in virtual slow motion, almost like she's being shot by a, a high speed camera. So obviously what she's doing here, Andy, she is programming the move that she wants. Now, you've got two choices when you get home after school. You can sit down and watch telly and maybe do some reading about golf, that can help. Or you can get up for five minutes, 10 minutes a day and actually work at these deep practice movements. So these slow movements, ingraining technical um, moves. Now, yeah. I think the good thing with this, Andy, is that you know, hopefully you can do them pretty good. Because you're doing it in slow motion, you probably won't do them that wrong. So if you can ingrain these movements. So we actually get people to do this in the middle of the summer as well. I like them to do maybe two minutes a day, but in the winter, definitely put some more time into it. And we, yeah. we, we do this a lot, don't we? Yeah, I think, the, I think with a lot, of, a lot of guys who get to the range and practice, it, obviously it's still gonna do yeah. them some good, but it is all about quality practice. And if you're trying to change something, Pierce, one of the problems with a lot of people just, just sort of banging balls on the range, it's so different to, it's hard to change movements. If, yeah. we want to Im if we want to implement a new movement or a new motor pattern, then it's so much easier to actually do this slow. So mm -hmm. coming away from the range actually can be more beneficial sometimes because yeah. you're focusing on the quality of the movement than just hitting golf balls. And we know when people just go into hitting mode, the speed's yeah. fast and the faster you go, the more likely you are to do what you've actually already done. So to yeah. make a change, it's always good to back it up, come a little bit slower and focus on the quality of movement. And you're going to see some much better results doing that yeah, as well. Yeah, for sure, for sure. As so, what that talent code says. Yeah, yeah. So you, so you can work at these movements, ingrain these movements in slow motion. It actually turns out to be a bit of a workout. I mean, if you were to get hold of your thumb and have a swing back really slow, and then do it really slow on the downswing. That's a physical workout. Mm. I can feel my core, I can feel my muscles stretching and, and, and working. So let, let's actually pick an example. So let's just say someone who sways, Andy. So a sway would be when they move too much away from the target. Target over there, their lower body moves laterally too much away from the target. This is how I would do it. Now this is not a wind up, I ask people to do this. It's gonna be a little cold, but I'm gonna get my shoes and socks off. The brave this, man in the winter here. This is a good job, it's 10 degrees today. Wouldn't be able to do this <laughs> one last week. Okay, so from here, white feet. So, the reason I've taken my shoes and socks off is that I want to be able to feel the ground. So I want to use all those little nerve endings in my feet, my proprioceptors, I want them to be able to feel the ground. And this really helps for, for power. We talk about using from the ground up to generate power. So, so it's really gonna make your work hard, isn't it? it? Absolutely, so balance is really good with this and power. So. The sway we know is that move there. So you can actually, you could do it in front of a mirror, but I think you'll be fine if you do deep practice. So you've got to work really hard now, focusing on that hip, turning and not swaying. So deep practice would be this. 
It really enhances the awareness as well. Like you say, as Pierce is doing this, isn't it? it's so hard to actually do it wrong because you're going that slow that you're going to be aware of everything. Whereas if you hit a golf ball, your, your awareness is more focused on actually hitting the golf ball as opposed to what you're doing with you know, your, your body. So sure. it's, the awareness is really you know, enhanced here. And you, as we mentioned, the chances of you performing a good movement now is just so much better. Yeah, and definitely when we, we see people sway a lot, we see people roll on the outside of the foot. Definitely. Because I've got my socks off, because I'm in barefoot mode, There's no I way can you're really do that. feel the ground. I'm actually intensifying the pushing down the weight on the inside of my right foot to make sure I don't get that sway. So again, doing this in slow motion. Now, if you do 10 of these slow motion swings, it may take you three or four minutes, but I guarantee it will give you a workout, and also you will learn the movements. So definitely, deep practice is, 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 will really help you. And that can be with any fault. It can be with any force. Yeah, and I think, I think the key thing is to, to understand what is your focus, what are you working on in your golf swing, you know, are you working on backswing, are you working on a, you know, stopping the sway, and really just put your attention into that one thing and say, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some deep practice on that. Yeah. You know, and like I say, two or three minutes can make a big difference yeah. than, than half an hour or even an hour just hitting golf balls on the for range. For sure, for sure. And if you want to take it up a, a step further, you can involve your brain in this as well from, from visualising good shots. Um, we often get people to visualise, and I've done this myself, you know, imagining your favourite golfer. Uh, hopefully they don't sway, but imagining your favourite golfer, let's say Tiger Woods, and imagining his hip action and putting that onto your hip action. And then when you swing down, you're transferring your weight and you're driving into the ball, you're getting a real good solid contact and you're imagining that golf ball flying through the air. This can really help. So you can always come out in sort of April when the, 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 the competitions are back on again and you're hitting the ground, you know, yeah. hitting the ground running for sure. So body motion drills, slow practice, it's certainly going to change. But like you say, if you can't get to the range, don't sort of think, well, okay, that's my practice done. Yeah. Do some things at home that's going to help you integrate some new motor patterns in your golf swing. Okay, cool. Okay, guys, look, I hope this helps. Um, post your comments down below, but really give this a try. And I guarantee you, if you can give, give yourself 10 swings every day barefoot, ideally do it in the house because my feet are getting really cold <laughs> now, it's going to really help you ingrain good movements. And that's what practice is all about, ingraining good movements. Definitely. So guys, post your comments below, give us a thumbs up if you like the video, and we look forward to seeing you soon. It's like the weak coach holding it tight. So, oh, it was tight, it's, it's, really so yeah. it's a great tip if you want to slice the golf ball, yeah. hold it tight. So <laughs> if you want to improve that or fix that slice, a little bit looser, make yourself close up the So yeah, here's a great drill to give you.